Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, if you saw my last video, you'll probably remember it was a Happy New Year video and an unboxing of the Kuzpo BC107 uh, cycling computer that I won from the John on a Bike uh, YouTube channel. So this video is going to be a more in-depth review. Um, all I did for the last video was just read out the features off the box. So I think I'm going to do a proper un unboxing, taking it out of the box, have a look and see what's inside, take it out for a ride, uh, try the app that it comes with and see exactly what, what it's all about and, and, and is it worth the money? Is it worth the very cheap price? So, opening the box, inside we've got a chunk of a plastic chunk, just put that to one side. On the top we've got the cycling computer itself, looks to be a much similar size to my, my Garmin one. Uh, maybe, a li maybe a little bit smaller, I've got the 830, so it's maybe a little bit smaller than that looking at it. Uh, and what looks to be a, a Garmin mount, it's certainly a Garmin style mount, um, I guess that looks on the face of it exactly the same as a Garmin mount. And then some other bits and bobs inside the packaging. So there's a small, there's a user manual there. Um, it's a bit scant, not, not too much info, but a lot of these things these days have a much more detailed user manual for you to download online. So we'll have a little a little scoot through that in a bit. See what we've got to do. And inside we have a handlebar mount. Looks to be like a, a Garmin style handlebar mount again. The yeah yeah goes on. It's the, the standard quarter turn. Whether that's a Garmin or a Wahoo style, I don't know. Because as you may well know, they're slightly different. Uh, stem mount, again very similar to a Garmin one. Looks like some spacer rings for the handlebar mount. An Allen key, you can suppose an Allen key to do the handlebar mount up with by the looks of it. Yeah, there's an Allen key bolt in there. A micro USB cable, because I haven't got enough of those. I don't know why firms bother sending out micro USB cables these days with the bits that they um, the bits that they sell, because the world must be full of micro USB cables. I know I've got a huge bag of the things, and that'll just go in there and probably never get used. Uh, rubber rings, I guess they're for holding the the stem mount on, and little rubber spacer to go between the stem mount and the stem. So very much. The mounting kit looks very much a Garmin style, a bit of a copy of the Garmin mounting kit really. Um, I guess, let's try and switch this on. No, it's not coming on, probably needs a charge like all these new things, are. they all need a charge. So um, I'll give that a bit of a, a bit of a charge up for a few hours. We'll take it out for a test ride, see how we get on. I shall report back to you shortly. Okay, time to start the field test. Uh, we're just going out for a little, I don't know, 28. 28, 30 miler maybe, something like that. Just to potter around, give the, give the unit a try, and see how I get on. Um, I'm so, as you'll see, I'm running it with the uh, in tandem with the Garmin, just to see if there's any differences in accuracy or, um, you know, that's, that, that sort of thing between, between the two, two computers and two systems. I'm going to set up a temporary Strava account so that I can download the stuff from the Kuzpo and compare it with my, my normal Strava account that will come from my Garmin, see how I get on, see what the difference is. Um, I'll give you a little bit of ride footage but not a huge amount because it's, it's just going to be me riding around. Okay, so there we are back from our test ride um, and bought my impressions of this tiny little cheap cycling computer. I was actually fairly well impressed to be honest with you. Um, it's it's easy to use, It's it's got all the functions you really you'd want from something like a Garmin other than the navigation which we'd mentioned before. It's got good battery life, it's got a clear display. Um, I'm not sure, sure, sure what else it really needs other than navigation. Um, so I'll just try and give you a bit of a, a bit of a run through some of the, the things it does. 
Okay, so once the unit's charged and ready to go, operation is A, very simple, and B, only done by these, uh, at the bottom, there are three uh, buttons here at the bottom, and that's all you need to use. So, first button on the left is the power button, on and off. The default screen for it to come up is this screen you'll see here. So we have a miles per hour, current miles per hour, current time, current distance, and current gradient. Uh, there's also a lap time here, and up in the top left, there's a battery indicator and a GPS signal indicator. And then top right, you've got the Bluetooth indicator, temperature indicator, and time. Starting a ride is as simple, simple as pressing that middle button, you get a countdown. If you want to stop the countdown and go straight in, you can press that middle button again, but that is now recording the ride. Uh, this is not going to record anything because it's got movement in it, movements detection in it anyway. So it's not actually recording anything because it knows it's not moving. Um, so I can stop that and you can see that's now in pause mode with the, the digits flashing. So when you're in the ride you have three screens you can look at. As I say the one with current screen, current time, um, distance, gradient, speed etc. There's this secondary screen which now shows the average miles per hour this as displayed by the average symbol up here somewhere. The current altitude, 770 feet roughly. And the average gradient down here in the bottom. And then there's a third screen that's got a maximum speed. That, that little indicator up there has now changed to maximum speed, uh, which would be here. There's a calorie counter if you've got heart rate monitor or something like that an odometer so I've taken it out for two test rides so far and it's done 81 miles on those two test rides and a maximum percentage of gradient and then another press will bring you back to the original screen again it's got a backlight you'll see as you can see the backlight coming on off a little bit um, so the, the backlight does auto switch itself off when it's not needed because I've got the lights on it, it's, it's going to sort of flip flip on and off a lot here. So to finish that ride that we, we'd started that's not recorded anything, we just, a long press on the one off screen, there we go, and it's finished. Um, so there are some settings you can change, uh, depending on how you use it, you, you, you will or won't need to go into the settings. I haven't had to go into settings um, because I don't use, some of the settings are for things like heart rate monitors and power meters, and that sort of stuff so I, I don't possess any of those I don't really use any of those so um, I don't I really need to go in the settings but we can I'll just sort of briefly run you through the settings page pages so you hold down this button here the, the left hand button for a long press and that brings you into P1 which is your first setting screen so this is where you end up connecting things like uh, power meters heart rate monitors, cadence sensors as well. It'll take, it'll take uh, those sort of things. Anything that's ANT plus compatible, it should go with. Um, so you, you should be okay for that. Let's just get that back into there. So there you go. So you can see it's got heart rate monitor flashing here, cadence sensor and the power meter. The idea now is of course that you power up those devices and, and start using them and it will, um, it will detect those and go from there. So. I am going to go back from that because I've I haven't got those. Uh, second screen P2. Let's just get into that. There we go. So this is tire diameter, wheel diameter here. So if you're using a wheel mounted speed sensor as well as a GPS, um, you would end up in here uh, using the up and down keys just to set your. There you go. You can you, you can set the the wheel the wheel size there quite easily for whichever wheel size you're going you're gonna to use. Again, I haven't got I have got one bike with a wheel sensor on it, but I probably won't set it up with this. So um, so that'll be fine. I'll just I'll just leave that where it is for the time being. Setting three. 
is a time setting. So it's picked up the time. For me, it's picked up the time from the GPS signal like like most of these things do. So I haven't had to um, haven't had to go into the, the the time setting screen. But here you can set the UTC time if you want to. Um, let's go back to the setting screen. Setting four is for uh, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Do you want metric or imperial units? Uh, I'm in the UK and I'm a bit old fashioned, so I'm leaving my set for miles per hour. I understand those a little bit more than kilometers. Don't sound so good. You know, doing a hundred kilometer rides only sixty-two miles um, doesn't sound quite so good as doing. Oh, I've done a, I've done a hundred of something, but I'm I'm just prefer my miles per hour. Okay. So let's go back into the setting screen. Two, three, four, five. Last setting screen in five is for power meter wattage. So if you're calibrating a power meter, you would need to go into this screen just to get that set up uh, properly. So that's it. That's it for settings. There's, th th there's nothing else to do for settings. I'm just going to back out of there. Um, that just brings you back around to number one. So. With three buttons and a, a lot of simple functionality in it, there's not a huge amount. I was I thought the manual was a little bit, a little bit sort of just a, a quick get you going guide and get on the internet and you know get a, a full downloaded manual. That wasn't necessary. There wasn't even there wasn't one. Everything you can pretty much do, you can do within this um, within these few setting screens or within the app. Um, so not not nice and simple, easy for anybody to use. So one of the things I was not concerned about, but I was interested in seeing, is how accurate this was compared to the Garmin. And I have to say, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Uh, I've taken it out for two test rides. The first test ride was just over 31 miles, 31 something miles. And the distance returned on the Kuzpo was exactly the same as the Garmin, it was 0 0.01 miles different, over 31 miles. So the, the tracking certainly seems to be as accurate as a Garmin. The second ride I did, it was about a quarter of a mile short, but that was my fault because I, it, I, I powered it off, or it powered off, I think, maybe, when I did a cafe stop, and then I got a couple of hundred yards or so down the road and thought, oh, I haven't, I haven't powered up the Kuzpo. So it was a little bit short of the um, the Garmin distance, a quarter of a mile, but I think that was that, that was purely that was purely my fault for uh, for not powering up when I left the cafe in time. So from an accuracy perspective, I can't see there being any difference. And it was the same with the um, the elevation and, and and the altitude and all that sort of stuff. Very very minor differences, one or two percent. Nothing nothing that I think most most people would really worry about. So so certainly there. Their technology is on a par with Garmin technology, absolutely. Okay, so that's some of the actual features on the computer itself sorted out. Um, so what else did it come with? It comes with an app, everything. What doesn't come with an app? My toothbrush comes with an app. Why does everything come with an app? But actually, this is one of those things where you do need an app. Um, and this is probably the only part of the whole, the whole setup and system where I, I had some struggle and some problems with the app. So I currently have a, an Android phone a um this is a one plus 6t and i could not get it to pair with this getting into the the pairing screen was fine on the computer but it would not find the phone um i don't know why i've reported the fault to kuzpo they're uh, looking into it they've asked me for details of my phone my android version all that sort of stuff all the techie stuff uh, and they're gonna, and they're going to look and see if it's a compatibility issue it may well be a compatibility issue if i'm honest with you because i do have trouble with this phone uh, getting it synced to a Fitbit very well uh, and a couple of other odd devices I'm, I have tr trouble with sometimes. So uh, it might be a compatibility, compatibility issue from the phone side, not actually from the Kuzpo side. But I can't be sure of that at the moment because I only have the one, one Android device to try it with. Fortunately, I have an iPad and an iPhone as well. Um, I had an old iPhone kicking around, so I tried that. That synced, it synced with that perfectly, straight out of the box. Found the Kuzpo, synced, brilliant, no trouble. Same with my iPad, which I'm gonna just fire up here, uh, only because it's a slightly bigger screen than my iPhone. 
So it worked perfectly on the iPad. It, it downloaded the, um, I'm just gonna go back. So when you're in the, the Coos Pro app, you can see I've done two test rides. Hopefully you can see I've done two test rides here. There's a 47 and a 50 kilometer test ride. Um, and that's worked, worked fine with one exception and I don't, again I'm not too sure why it's not downloaded the map onto the app so if you can see that where the um, I'll just see if you can see it better so you can see the the breadcrumb trace of the app of the ride sorry on the app but you can't actually see the map that's surrounding it um, again that's something an issue I've reported to Kuzpo and they're going to look into that because they believe I should see the app data a bit like you a bit like you normally would. It's got all the usual stuff on there, average times, lap times if you want it, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's some, some data about average speeds, start and end times, maximum altitudes, lowest altitudes, climbs, drops, um, average temperatures, average slopes, maximum slopes, all that sort of thing. So it does all the sort of stuff that all the other apps do. And finally, if my laptop decides to play ball, is the Strava. So there's a, a very easy way within their app just to put your Strava login details in, and then you can link up your Strava account. So uh, if you're going to, um, if, you're, if you're a Strava user, then that might be a better option for you than the Coos Pro app. You can use the Coos Pro app and just port the data over to Strava. And if you can, again, I can't, don't know if you can see this because of the lights. Turn the lights around, turn the lights off. No, you probably can't. But there's a, uh, I'll see if I can put a, uh, I'll put a screenshot in, in the video of the, the ride that's synced to over to Strava. Uh, and that's worked perfectly. So if, you, if you're looking at the map data afterwards and all that sort of stuff, and you are a Strava user, you're probably only going to use the Coos Po app as a, a transport device, essentially, to get the data out of the computer into Strava. Um, but yeah, no, no problems with that at all. Just a couple of slight minor glitches with the actual Coos Po app itself, or possibly my phone, as I say. Um, yeah, so I think all in all, pretty good value for money. So would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely, I think I would. For £50, if you don't need navigation, this is probably a really, really good, uh, a really good buy for you. It, it will work with anything you've got. If, if you've already got Garmin's and that sort of thing, it will work fine with that because the mount's identical to the Garmin mount. Um, like you say, other than navigation, it's got every, everything you possibly want is there. I'm gonna, am I gonna use it? Yeah, I'm gonna use it. I've got it, I might as well use it. Um, if I'm if I'm out touring, no, I'll, I'll be taking the Garmin with the maps and my navigation. But if I'm going out for a, a club ride, maybe where we, we know the route, or I I know that somebody else is is leading the ride and has got the route, I don't need the route. I don't need navigation. I'll take this. I won't put the strain and the stress on the battery of my uh, of my Garmin. Or if I'm just going out for a training ride, I'm going to Velo Life somewhere where I know where exactly where I'm going, and I don't need it. I don't need anything fancy. I'll be using this instead of my Garmin. And if I wear the battery out on this in a year or 18 months, who who cares to some extent? It's 50 quid. It's not two, three, 400 pounds for a brand new Garmin. Um, so yeah, I think I would I would absolutely recommend that. I'm gonna put a link to it down below. If you fancy buying one, if you if you wanna use that, that link to Amazon from da down below, uh, it helps me out, it helps the channel out as well, So which is great. Um, but yeah, for 50 quid in my book, you can't go wrong. Four and a half stars out of five for me. If they get the couple of glitches with the app sorted out, it'd be a five star one, easy, easily all day long. Um, but very good value for money, even with its small glitches at the moment. That's all I've got for, for this video. So as always, if you like the video and you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon, you'll get some sort of notification when we get our next video out. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you on the road.